Welcome to the show. It's Dano on Fire, and we are closing the month of October. Uh, it's quite shocking to know, like, the year is going so fast. With me, I have someone who has created a brand that has become the talk of the town. Everyone in Colombo wants to take a bite here. Uh, it's amazing to know that uh, a little place that serves such wholesome food uh, will be loved by so many. It's a unanimous decision that everyone feels like they need to come here. Uh, but the only problem is finding a table, which is a good problem to have. I have with me the founder of Stash. Hello. Tash. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say Stash and then Anyway, I have Tash and who has been very creative with her name in terms of the place where we are right now. So how did Tash become Stash? Well, um, I started off with Tosa Khan's Rose Palm, which has the moustache. Tosa Khan's Rose Palm. Tosa Khan's Rose Palm. Yes, okay. that was my original business. Okay. And I have a general obsession with moustaches, if you All right. didn't know. Yes, correct. I can't grow my own, unfortunately. But did you say that you could make me the ambassador? I can, 100%. Yeah. My you, get 10 you know, off. my stash was doing really good, but when I was on this trip, uh, I had to like do it by myself, uh, and I, I lost my bush in San Francisco. The uh -huh. bush is there. Right. Okay. So then to match that, I had to cut this, and eventually I lost everything. Now it's growing. No, it looks it takes a long time. I promise you. But the the twirling scene. It's a bit strengthless these days. Oh really. It doesn't have the girth. I wouldn't know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Continue. We'll come back to this story about my bush. I'll come back okay, to it later. Thank you. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> yes. So then, how? Um, so this this stash. Then you changed. No. So my original thing was called Tosa Khan's Rose Palm, which has a moustache in its logo because I have a general obsession with moustaches. Right. Then when I started this, which was six months ago, actually, very very young. Um, I wanted to have the same logo so that people who know the brand Tosa Khan can still associate right. it with Tosa Khan, but it's a totally different French. venture. Hmm. So, battled with a million names. I want to call it Madame Moustache, and then people oh, were like, really um, nice. yeah, but they're like, oh, it might be a brothel, we never know. <laughs> yeah, so then, then a few people came together and was like, oh, why don't you just call it the stash? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's short, it's catchy. It goes with your name. It goes with my name. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I love the name. I think it's a good vibe. So it's a cute little place. Uh, it's not like where you're going to get red carpet and like have people just opening doors for you. But it's such a wholesome, homely place. Tell me about how did this vibe sort of take off? So initially, was it always planned to be this size or did you have to go on adding more and more tables and chairs? So this space, we've actually been here for six years when I started Tosa Khan. And this inside space was my sister's cake shop called the Sugar Shack. She unfortunately migrated, so the space became vacant and I decided, okay, I'm gonna do this. But you were not the I, cooking um, person. I am the savory side, she's the sweet, sweet side. side. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, I can't do the sweet stuff. So right. people are asking me to do cakes, I'm like, no, no not, no, my, not, not my scene. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then this space was anyway there. This wall used to be a hot pink wall because right. that was what the cake shop used well, to be. Right. And I wanted to make it a little bit more you. along my yeah, lines. Down and just yeah, yeah, a little bit more chilled out. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, so we had the tables, we had the couches. This area was actually like where all the cakes were. Right. We got rid of the showcases and then put tables. Then uh, after it started getting really popular, couldn't actually fit everyone in, then just kept putting more tables. I know. And so how do the people who serve the food walk around? They have an imaginary elevation up here? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. We fly yeah. and drones come in and, and leave drop the, the food. Yeah. Because I can't imagine because I came I think once on a Sunday and y'all were just buzzing. There were yeah. people waiting to come in. Yeah. So when people come and like leisurely talk, Ane Baba, that was Bomu Api ice coffee and they are like sitting and sipping on one bloody ice coffee. What do you do? You can't chase them out? Yeah, so and there are like seven people waiting out. outside. Can't help. That's how it is. We try to accommodate as many people as possible. Do you possible. do things like mm. No. <laughs> we try not to. <laughs> we try not to. <laughs> we don't know if people have felt that way. I don't yeah. know. I mean, if there's people waiting in line, we're also a bit like, Anne, give us 10 minutes, 10 minutes. These guys might leave. Give us yeah. 5 minutes, and more like 7 you minutes. Say, like, that table there with a the pink shirt, you <laughs> might leave. <laughs> might leave. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, tell the customers to stare them down. Like, go walk around. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a great problem to have. Did you ever think Stash will pick up? 
I was really scared because at the beginning of the year when we were talking about starting, it was it was quite uncertain because last year was a miss. I know. And then this, this year is also a miss, this but a better miss than the miss. This year is also a little bit better than last yeah. year's miss. Yeah. Um, and a bit scary because ever since we started here for Thorsa Khan, it's just been drama after drama I in know. the country. Because right? I don't think Thorsa Khan reached. As no, many no. people as stash. No, no. Yeah. Definitely not. It, uh, I think it was you a bit... You named it out Rajanikanth, no? Um, no. Tell the truth. No, it's actually Ravana. So, in Thailand, you know how you get those giant statues at the airport? Yeah. That's Ravana. Right. And Thosakanth is Ravana. In Thai. Oh. Yeah. Very random. I had a t-shirt. We used to go to Bangkok. I had a t-shirt with this makara face on it and it had Thosa Khan. Favourite t-shirt, got it in all the colours, wore it every day. My friend Maybe started calling me, my friend started calling me Thosa Khan. And then that's that came Thosa Khan. That's yeah. amazing. A all lot right. of people think it's a Thosa Khan because it's... Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah, they're like, I don't want Thosa. So you were serving similar food? No. No, so that was that was only the roast pang sandwiches. That's and, it. Yeah. So roast pang sandwiches and tea, that's what I do there. Right. Yeah. And like good, like yarate and all. Yeah, tinky yeah. tea. Superb. We have so much to talk about, especially about the menu that you get to enjoy here. It's very different and the inspiration is very selfish. We'll come back and speak more. Do stick around. This is Down One Five. Back to the show, we are checking out Stash. Uh, I wanted to speak about this very selfish uh, menu that is available here. What I meant by this whole selfish thing is the fact that, you know, there are things that we like to eat our food with. There's always these combinations that we kind of like and we find it a bit weird to say it out. You're like, mm, good people? What? Like, what would they say? But, and it turns out really nice. So, that was one of your inspiration. That's why I said that word. <laughs> so all of these things are that you used to like have a midnight snack with or you used to like sort of, you try it out? A little bit of both. Okay. So our main dish, the most popular one is called the Siam Ceylon, which is the Kiribath with the red curry. Thai red curry, favorite, all time favorite. Kiribath, obviously, favorite. everyone's favorite. And you all make the nice gooey kiribath. Yeah, not the yeah. diamond not the situation. No. Nah. Yeah, that is to build a house. No. Yes, no. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so the kiribath, that's how it, how it came, came about. about. So I like to put different combinations, things that people don't necessarily think would go together. Right. But then they try it and they're like, oh, damn. Yeah. Right. So that's what I wanted to do with that. So similarly with the Turkish eggs, um, it was it's odd to have eggs and paripu, mm. right? You don't think. And but it's we Turkish. eat egg with paripu and like rice. Yeah, but it's curd and paripu mm. and eggs, which is quite Weird. random. Very yeah. random. But it, it came together nicely and the colours look really good. So I want to make beautiful food that tasted really good as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's how I came up with some of the menu items. The other ones, I did get help from Consultant Chef to come and create something that was uniquely for us. Okay. Yeah. And also something that's really hard is consistency when it comes to like running a restaurant. Uh, sometimes you need the same person to do it always. Then it's just too much on one person and then if you go there and you don't get the same thing, I'll be disappointed because I've yeah. come craving for that, maybe that kiribat with the whole Thai red curry. And I don't want to be disappointed. How do you sort of maintain that every day, dishing it out the same way? So we have our recipes and everyone in the kitchen has to stick to exact recipe. And after we make everything, they make sure I taste it so that I am happy with it. If there's something that needs to be adjusted, we adjust it more salt, more sugar, more lime, mm. whatever that needs, more chili, whatever. whatever that needs to be adjusted. Because every day the ingredients are different. Like, say for a shakshuka, the tomato that you bought when you wrote the recipe versus the tomato you're getting today 
will be from a different farmer, different grade, different type, right? So it won't taste the same. Even if right. you follow the recipe to a T, you have to keep tasting, 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 and Can then you get it? yeah, because yeah. even for the red curry. The, the lemongrass, you can have a strong lemongrass or you can have a mild one. So you're putting in the same quantity in the recipe, but you're not getting the same taste. Yeah. So you need to keep tasting. And I try to get my team also to develop the flavor. So when they make something and they're like, try it out, tell me. I was like, no, you first tell me what you think is missing so that they develop the palate for the food. And they understand, okay, this is what needs to go in there, or I think it needs a bit more salt, so that they also get to that point where they know, okay, say by chance I'm not around, I'm generally always around, um, they can make it to the tea. A tea, yeah. Now, I wanted to ask you, were you in this hotel or like culinary industry? Not really. Um, what did you want to be? Actually, as a kid, I did kind of want to be a chef. Um, then I want to be a pilot, then I want to be a farmer, then I want to be a singer, and then... Please, I, I want to be a Victoria's Secret model. It doesn't happen. It doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so as a kid, I did want to have a restaurant though. And I wanted to call it Jailhouse Cafe. And everything was like themed as a jail and the people were like... People who are serving are going to be like prisoners. And it was a bit extra. But that obviously didn't happen. Yeah, um, good. Then I studied some basic basic bachelor stuff that has nothing to do with food but my family has always been in the food industry my mom she has a bakery called Hastagiri which is my grandfather's so that is like an old school bakery like malupang serving yeah but like wood fired oven old school stuff mm, that pang is the best pang yeah, on earth correct yeah. 100% so our roast pang is wood fired from there yeah. and where are where are those stores so her bakery is in Dam Street near okay. Halster. Right. So that's where the wood fire oven is. Right. Everything is like. You should bring in the tea bunnies here. There's gonna be something coming up in the future with tea bunnies. So I'm telling you, yeah. tea bunnies is the bomb. Yeah. I have to say, uh, Mum is definitely cool. Uh, she has like purple hair. We're getting into a break. We'll come back and speak more. Do stick around. This is Town One Five. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, keeping the stash alive. I must say, um, height is a problem, so we have elevated her. Sorry. <laughs> on a few cushions. If you do see it, we would like to keep it very transparent. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to say it. Uh, our final segment. Now, in terms of the feedback, like you have a team and uh, like, did you, what is next for Stash? Like, I'm sure people would have asked, are you going to go bigger? Are you going to go to a bigger place? The ones who can't get the appointments or like the tables booked, they must be hating you know a little bit. So how do you, that's a good head to have. So what, I mean, what is the solution to it? Are you planning on going bigger? Not really, I'm quite, I'm content with the size that we have. I know we have some space upstairs, people are asking if we can expand upstairs. I think this is a good size. This is manageable. Um, it's a little bit more homely. And you're one on one with everyone. Yeah, one on one. And then the the kitchen also can handle this because I don't want to delay food too much because when it gets really busy, it's obviously difficult to get out all the dishes within the 10, 15 minute general timeline that you're supposed to give it. Mm. it it'll it take a little bit more time when it's really really busy but we're trying our hardest so if we go bigger i don't think our kitchen capacity will be enough then all of that has to also change mm. and i don't know this space is this space is nice i like it i like this size it's manageable it's fun mm. it's it's a good good size i think tell me about some big people who may have come here and who have been like so hooked on the food that they have always come back. Um, Mahela came once hmm. or twice or three times. I think three times. Mahela comes yeah. to eat here. Got it. Yeah. And? That was that was really exciting because that was right at the start mm. when we had just started. We're like, how do you know about us? <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. Um, we've had a few other celebrities. Some of them I don't even know, but my kitchen guy's like, oh my god, this person here, that person's here. 
like okay cool <laughs> uh but like when they see you do they know that you are the person who runs runs the show i mean you are just running around in a shorts and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I look like a homeless person on the street <laughs> most of the time. Um but like I get shape because people tend to know. notice. Yeah. Yeah. So, um who has been your inspiration in this field? Hard to tell. I never really had anyone like even in Sri Lanka or abroad, but I've eaten from a lot of places and I really enjoy my food obviously. And everywhere I go, it's not about shopping or sightseeing. I just want to eat. I want to taste everything. Everything right. every, anything weird, anything that I can get my hands on. What's the strangest can... thing that you put in your mouth? Mm. I made it in the most innocent mm, I, way. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Trying to not think about yeah. those lines. Um I don't know, maybe frog or escargot. Frogs have become so popular. But it's nice, dude. Really? It's actually yummy. It's kind of in between it, fish and chicken. Yeah, I was told it tastes like chicken thigh. It's yeah. in between fish and chicken. And yeah. crocodile is also similar to that. Really nice. What have you not eaten? Human. Uh, human. Not yeah. Mm. Okay. Not <laughs> um, in terms of adding more to your menu. Planning more is always annoying though. Our menu is quite small yeah. but we've tried to hit a lot of different flavor palettes and it's quite international but also Sri Lankan. Mm. Uh so there's like Japanese, there's a katsu sandwich, there's tacos which is Mexican, um there's Turkish stuff, Middle Eastern stuff, um Thai obviously, Sri Lankan, British, all of that is all mixed in there. So I want to the next few items that i want to introduce hopefully in the next month or two um i'm tr- still trying to figure out how to make it different how to make it exciting not like the standard stuff that's available around so um yeah still working on that trying to figure it out okay yeah. um so six days of the week this is buzzing mondays is your close day not an easy business six days you are caught up trips are a dream now What's a holiday? Oh, no, you don't know that. Well, it is for what? <laughs> yeah. So you open at what time? We open at nine. So we're nine to five, Tuesday to Sunday. That's it. Nine to five. We have breakfast, brunch. That's it. That, you didn't want to push enough. it to dinner, no? No, man. I just have to have a life. Life, no. no that is true. That is true. Fair enough. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Well, I'm very proud of you. I'm really happy that I was able to have you on this show. Um, I always like when there are like new things happening, and when I came here, I wrote to you way before. And we never Perfect. like. Not my fault. I gave you my number. Yeah. Then after that, of course. Listen, who is the most important person here? Anyway, on that note, we need to wrap things up. Thank you so very much for hosting us, for giving us such delicious food. Shout out to the mum as well, um, and to the amazing staff here. They are really good. Uh, we will see you soon with another episode of uh, Down on Fire. But till then, you could come enjoy stash and have some great food. We'll see you soon.